Hello, everybody. I, I would like to welcome you to another episode to Tamimi Talks. As you may recall, uh, we have been addressing the FDI in the context of the UAE and the variety of developments. We are very happy to welcome my partner, Mohamed Al Marzouki, with us today. Hello, Mohamed. Hi, Isabella. Uh, Mohamed is our senior partner. He is a deputy managing partner and the head of litigation in Abu Dhabi for our uh, law firm. Uh, for those of you who have not yet had a chance to work with Mohammed and his team. He's got over 20 years of experience in advising uh, clients, governmental entities on legislative projects, clients in relation to criminal matters, legislative matters, and really a lot of issues that concern litigation, but of course, legislation as well. This is the context in which, uh, Mohammed, we would like to talk to you about uh, um, the UAE and the FDI today. Uh, thank you for finding time to, to be with us. Um, you may recall lately we were actually discussing, you know, the uh, FDI and the certain judicial aspects, uh, legislative aspects in, in the UAE. The growth rate in the UAE has been really uh, astonishing when it comes to the GDP. Um, in the context of the GDP, can you tell us, please, what is happening in the UAE? Yeah, Isabella, if you recall in 2019, the government has uh, decided to set a target for the next decade. Uh, the target of which uh, to increase the GDP of the country from 1.4 trillion dirhams to 2.9 trillion dirhams in, in just nine years or 10 years. Now, this sets a, a very ambitious goal, and there was uh, teams working on this from the government departments, local and federal, uh, a team composed of 500 experts, alongside with hundreds of experts from the private sector, which they were advising the government, one of which, of course, it was uh, Altamimi and company. Uh, the ambition is to increase the GDP of country the non-oil part, 8% mm -hmm. compounded uh, rates for the next uh, 10 years. All these experts work together in order to um, have a better uh, environment for business. And in order to do this, you need to uh, do a lot of changes in the legislations, the, the current legislation, yes. and also uh -huh. Um, uh, some sort of reformation of the judicial system to increase the standard of this judicial system to uh, an international level. Yes. Well, that's actually very interesting because uh, when we think about the risk of doing business, right, something that really foreign businesses look into, and especially when I think about the, the, the World Justice Project, right, it, where there has been an indication that there is a strong link between uh, transparency of a legal system, reliance on the stability within, you know, the legal system and how it evolves to match the ever-changing world that we live in. And it seems to me, like really with what you're saying, the UAE authorities are very aware of that. Now, in terms of, you know, the uh, judiciary system reform, can you tell us a little bit about what has been happening? What are the more concrete measures or maybe different laws that the authorities are looking into? Isabella, when any investor would like to invest uh, abroad, he has to take many elements in his consideration. True. One of which, yeah. uh, obviously, is the risk of doing business. The studies show that 45% of, th of these um, consideration lies with uh, the risk of doing business. The element of risk of doing business, basically, uh, it touches the quality of uh, legislation, how easy is doing business uh, in terms of these legislations, and also the quality of judicial system and the transparency. These represent, as I mentioned, 45% of any consideration by uh, any uh, investors. Uh, so in order to do that, as, and I, as you have mentioned, Isabella, the government uh, are well aware of this. And they had put uh, in a place a very ambitious plan 
in order to uh, do a whole uh, reformation of current legislations, both in terms of um, trying to do um, uh, ease the laws in, in doing business, and on the other hand, is trying to um, you know improve the quality of judicial system. And as you know, we have around 80 laws and the, uh, and they have announced, yeah. 40 of which I think it, it was already issued uh, related to the, to the business sector. Another 40 or so is still on the pipeline. Uh, and in terms of judicial reformation, uh, in the last couple of days, the government has issue, issued more than 12 laws uh, in order to increase the quality of uh, judicial system in UAE. Uh, this will represent uh, a need for um, a clarity, transparency, mm -hmm. quality of judgment, quality of services. It will also include a digital trans transformation in the legal system and the court system, yeah. which make uh, for everyone, the access of, uh, to the court will be much easier for everyone. That's, I think, really impressive because, you know, thinking about each of the laws, right, and you and your team will know very well how much consideration, time, assessment, benchmarking goes into making making some propositions of legal provisions, right? So with all the laws that the government has started already enacting and the new laws in the pipeline, it seems to me that there is an enormous time investment, enormous effort that the government is putting into making sure that the country is growing, of course, in economical sense, but that all those stars are aligned, we can say, right? That the legal system is also continuing to be attractive, that it develops and it actually even, you know, the digital transformation that you mentioned, that is actually so crucial because businesses want to function differently. A lot of them really want to connect electronically and, and it's I'm, I'm really uh, impressed to see that the courts and maybe the notary's offices also are looking into making the way that they function much more modern, right? Because that would be the direction. Uh, Mohammed, just on a final note, with yourself and your team, um, how can you then and how can Altamimi help with any questions that are related to, you know, those legal changes that are already enacted in deportation? Would you be able to then assist? Actually, we already been involved in uh, advising the federal government and the local do government on those uh, changes. Uh, we have uh, worked uh, here in the legislative drafting uh, department uh, with many local and federal government. We have reviewed most of these laws and we have um, advised uh, the federal government what will be the best practice internationally to be adopted and uh, this happened already. Uh, also, our legislative team are uh, very experienced. We have a large team that uh, are uh, advising uh, not only the uh, federal government, but also the local government in UAE and also other government in the, in the region. Like uh, we have uh, several projects we are working with the Saudi government uh, at the moment. But I wanted to mention something that Hopefully by end of this year, we will have all the changes in the place and uh, yeah. we, we will start to uh, see um, the implementation of those uh, laws and we will start to see uh, the progress that uh, the government has, has in, in, in its mind. Uh, and basically we already started to see high net worth individual uh, coming to the, to the country. Uh, now, in recent uh, study by Henley and Partners, they have mentioned that more than 4,000 high net worth individuals have already moved their assets and their residency to the UAE, which uh, makes uh, UAE number one in attracting uh, those kind of uh, uh, individuals, which is, we have already seen this. And we are yet to see more. Uh, and also, as, as you know, uh, Isabella, we are fully equipped on advising those individuals as we have uh, experts in many fields from different nationalities. Um, and we could definitely um, help them in setting up here 
and advising them on the regulations, what is applicable on them and uh, what is not applicable on them and how they can benefit from the current uh, legislation which gives them more uh, flexibility, uh, if, if I can put it this way, uh, and doing business comparing to the past. Yes, well, that's uh, that's really excellent. I think all all I can say, uh, Mohammed, is that really, you know, to our listeners, our audience, um, um, we there there wouldn't be a, really a better um, a better person than those individuals who are involved in the legislative drafting itself and, you know, seeing what the background is to help you interpret what those laws mean to you. And thank you very much, Mohammed, for uh, having joined us uh, today. Thank you once again for having been with us for this session and we look forward to sharing some updates with you shortly.